Hey everyone, welcome back, welcome back. This is part two for those who've seen part one or haven't seen part one. If you go to the main uh, YouTube page, you'll see videos. Click on that and go to part one first. This is part two of um, me creating a traveler's journal for my daughter for our trip coming going to Canada here at the end of the month. Um, I'm waiting for the face plate to dry. Um, and so now I figured I'm going to go ahead and get some of the sewing projects done that I want inside the book. One thing I love about when I create my own journals, I like to sew. So I like to sew on papers, sew on pages. I love the look of different patterns. I was testing out some of the patterns there on the machine to see which pattern I liked. I also did this too just because um, I want to make sure my machine this, I'm using a Brothers, uh, for those who use a Brothers machine. I'm using just the basic Brothers machine today. Um, I'd rather use that with my paper than my Faf. So, um, so I'm just testing out different mm -hmm. patterns to see which one I like. And I, I'm, I do love the leaf one because here's the journal right here. Mm -hmm. And see it's got flowers and the pattern's really cute. So I'm really liking the leaf pattern. And of course, I love antique stitch. Those who know me when I do videos and paperwork, I I'm, I'm love the antique stitch work. So I'll probably be doing those two stitch patterns on pages that are here in the book. So I'm just going to go ahead and dig in. I just can't wait for this to dry. I'm still going to give this 24 hours to do its thing. I notice it's getting more clear. Let's see if I can look this up to you. See how it's getting more clear. If you've seen the video just before this is a little foggy. I see a little bit like right here a little bit dark. I don't know if that's the paper that I did it on or it still needs to clear. So um, I'm going to test that out. All right my cat's in the room. You can hear her meowing. Go figure. I think a storm's coming. That's the nice thing about Florida. It's like seems like there's a storm every day. <laughs> it comes and goes but it's always something right. All right, so let's let that dry. Let it do its thing. I'm looking, like I said, I'm going to give it 24 hours to um, to do its thing. I already went ahead and uh, if you can see here, I already cut my signatures, my first two signatures. In a journal, if you're new at journaling, usually there's two to three signatures. And this is what a signature is, about 10 pages folded in half. Um, this is my signature one. This is my signature two. I've already cut them to size and if you're using a Reader's Digest journal, I can help you out um, when it comes to size. So when I cut um, my booklet pages here, I cut it five and a quarter wide and then seven and a quarter long. Um, I used a rotary cutter, I, I mean in a stencil to make it nice and straight. I wanted a straight crisp uh, edge. I didn't want to rip the corners or anything and make it rough looking. I, I'm doing it that way because I know my daughter. My daughter is, um, she's more, uh, I guess I can say, like, she likes things straight. <laughs> the best way I can put it. Um, I'm doing this video upside down, so there you go. So I figured I'll work with the first signature and then the second sig signature for the things I want sewn on pages. But at the third signature, I did not cut. So after I get some sewing done, I figured I will cut, you know, I guess let's, I'll do that in reverse. I will cut the signature so you can kind of have an idea how I did it. So as you can see, as I, this is the cut pages that fit inside that book and these are the uncut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the pages for the third signature for this journal. And I'm going to show you how I did it. I don't have no fancy dancy cutting machine. Um, I just used, let me get it, get it over here. So I just um, used a, you know, regular, you can get this at Walmart, um, rotary tool. And I just got the cheap one. And um, I use these when I cut fabrics there for stock. But um, I don't use my new blades. So at the, my, the, the stock that I cut out in the garage with fabrics, I need them really sharp. And so then I have all these really dull blades. So I just keep those dull blades because they actually work really well with paper uh, before I discard them. Um, I've tried sharpening the blades. Um, it's just not worth it. You might as well just buy all new blades um, by the end. Um, it just does the sharpening method just with foil and all that stuff just doesn't work. I'll give you a heads up on that. I'll save you time and headache. So I imagine I can get a smaller ruler than this, but I just grabbed one that I had right here on the table. I'm sure I'll be knocking a bunch of things around. 
but that's okay. And like I said, if you need to get a pen and paper, you might want to write this down. If you ever, you're doing a Reader's Digest cover journal, like a journal, um, the pages need to be five and a quarter wide. So what I did is I took the very first page from that signature and kept it folded in half. I put it on my measuring mat. Here's my measuring mat. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Here we go. This might help. Let me get these things out of the way. Okay. And I put it right to the edge. And right here is my number seven. Uh, you can't see that. Let me see if I can push this forward. Maybe this might help. Here we go. There you go. Now you guys can see my numbers. It might be backwards to you, which is just fine. At least you can see where I'm at. So I put it to the very edge of my cutting mat where there's a line. If you have that handy dandy tool, I've seen those like little, I don't know who, those few people have this machine. They put it right on there and they just cut it straight down. That's fine. Go for it. I'm just using what I have on my table. So it's five and a quarter wide. And I took that rotary tool and I just go straight up and then I have all that little waste. I mean, some people don't care to have perfect pages. But I, my daughter, I'm making her book the way I know she would like it. So that is what I'm doing. This is not my book. It's my daughter's book. And I know she would love these clean pages. All right. And so the opposite direction um, is seven and a quarter. So five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And that is page number one. So I'm going to open it up and it's going to lay it flat right there. And I'm going to go to the second page. So the second page in that book is already a dictionary page. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to lay it right flat because it's going to be sewn right in the middle. All right, so the next one is this page. I'm going to have to cut this one because I know it's going to be too big. I'm sure there are easier methods to do this, but this is the one that I found that is easiest for me. I guess easiest for me to understand. It's, I don't know, it just works for me. And then I'm going to go seven and a quarter. And it's nice and straight. All right, there's page two or three on that signature. Okay, I want to make sure it's the right side. That's the right side right there. This one here is just fine. This is that train log. That was in like, uh, what was it, that kit I made you guys, the... Traveler's Junk Journal kit, um, the kit before last, those little train logs. So I found one of those. Yeah, I'm just going to put that in there. I love how the paper, she can just write stuff or just put something on there. That's done. Going to the graph paper. Right, I'm not going to want the little dots on the edge. I just want this seven and a quarter. I'm just going to make this even off that edge. So I figured instead of doing all three signatures in front of you guys, I figured at least I can do one signature to show you how I do it. Save some time. All right. Look how that looks like that. The next one's the dictionary page. I don't have to worry about it. I don't think I do. Nope. That one's good. So the next page is. So the next three and four pages, which I could probably do them all together, like this. And I can keep them all together because those are larger pages. I'll just cut them all together. So five and a quarter. Five, seven and a quarter. Any particular way? Nope. And then after this is my favorite part. I love the sewing part. That is my all-time favorite part. Seven and a quarter. Where I can design different stitch work on some of the pages. I like to sew on the pockets and not glue them. Some things I like to glue, but I just don't like the look of bubbled up pages from glue. Um, so, all right, that's that, that's that, love that page, that's pretty, pretty, this one I guess I'll leave a rough edge, 
for her. Go figure. Although it is not even. I, knowing my daughter, I'll just do it right. <laughs> she is a little bit on the even side kind of kid. Let's see. All right, we'll make that even seven. Looks good. Not a kid. My daughter's 21. All right, so there's that signature all done. And what I do, maybe there is a wrong way of doing this, but I do it. I make sure that it's all tucked in really nice, as far as it can. Then I crease it pretty good. And I one last time all together, I take it to that measuring thing again. I have no clue if this is the right way or wrong way, but I go there to seven and a quarter again. Look at, see how some of them stick out. I'm just going to go right over that nice and slow and take my time to give it that really clean cut. I know my daughter is going to want to want. Look at that. Look how clean that looks. She will appreciate it. I know she will. All right. If you're watching me this far, I'm glad you guys are patient. So there's the third signature. And that third signature, I did want to put another postcard that's Niagara. And maybe an envelope in here some way, somehow. I'm thinking this is the cover of the third signature, so I'm not going to put nothing there. This here is obviously going to be in the middle. This says Canada right there. Let that go by. Go to the next page. That's the log. Move that up some. Graph paper. Another dictionary page. Maybe it's this page. Yep. I could do that. So this is one of those first day of issue envelopes and I think I'm going to, I'm not sure if I want to do it this way. I think I am. So I think I'm going to sew it along the edge here and like this right there and then she can just put insert something in there. So I'll leave that there. And this third signature, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I just might just sew that along the edge onto this page. Who knows? We'll find out here in a little bit. All right, I can go ahead and bring that machine back to you guys a little bit. Move this over. Clean up my space a little bit. These are extra papers. I'll leave for, for later on. Okay, here's the book do it upside down because you guys are a different direction. Okay, so here's the third signature. I'm going to set her right on in here. There you guys go. I'm keeping her a little, you know, not so thick because I want her to add what she wants to it. As you can see how it all fits inside that book. It just looks really good. Put that right back down here at the very end. Yeah, so it fits really good. All it fits really good inside there. It's going to close nice, nice and crisp, just like my daughter. <laughs> I can't wait to put that face plate on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. No boy, that's a boy cat. So this something for those who own or can say have cats, how they, it's like the moment you are crazy busy, they like to get into like your business like no matter what you're doing they want to be part of it but when you're not busy they're just do their own thing okay so my, my daughter's journal I didn't want it to be just holding something into place I wanted the first thing when she first opened up her journal to be very simple I didn't want to clutter it with like any type of pockets I thought about doing a pocket there but I want her to create her own page so when she opens it up I want it to be like like this. There's the edge of the... I wanted it to be simple. The very first page. So I figured the first thing I'll do, I found this old vintage Niagara Falls postcard. I'm going to sew that on the whole front like that. Um, but I'm thinking I'm just going to sew the card and then glue it on because my next page in this, in this signature is a pocket and I don't want to see that stitch work on the other side. So really, the very first thing I need to do is put this pocket on. So 
So I'll move this signature to the side. So when you first turn this first page, I wanted to do a Niagara Falls pocket on that page. And I wanted her to be able to put stuff in there because on this opened page is her schedule. And on her schedule, I'm going to have it sewn to this page so she can flip it forward and type on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew this pocket. I'm going to sew on the sides, the bottom, and the sides because I want her to be able to insert something in there. And I think I'm going to use the stitch. Let me see here. I'll tell you what, it is fun to, uh, to play. I don't get to play much. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the, the antique stitch. I don't know, that's kind of cool too. I'm going to do the antique stitch. Fingers crossed, guys. And that one's going to be, let's see, I think it's number 17. One more. Okay, fingers crossed, guys. I'm going to go ahead and see where this closes. I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to clip it. Nothing like a good clip, right? So I'm going to probably start right here and then work my way around. Here we go. If you need to fast forward, fast forward. Here we go. I'm going to take my time so I don't want it to rip the paper. This postcard was from 1940, 42, what did I say, 42 or 43. It's really beautiful, very colorful. I mean, I guess I could have waited until we got a souvenir in Canada, but I don't know. There's something about vintage papers. So I guess have some old and some new. She could design it with the new stuff. All right, turn it. Unclip that now. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, I hope this is not upside down for you guys. I guess I could have turned the. I could have turned the sewing machine in the opposite direction, possibly. At least you guys kind of get the idea. So I was talking to her yesterday, showing her pictures. It's kind of hard to explain what you're doing. Um, I'd rather just wait to get it done and then show her. And that's what's nice thing about doing this on video is that she can watch to see what I actually did. And maybe she can understand, you know, and appreciate it a little bit more, I hope. Okay. Almost good. That stitch work just puts a little added extra touch, I think. It's just cute. It's just, and makes it more durable. I think, it, I guess I'm not a fan in particular of glue, because glue is glue. It can, uh, it can lift, it'll, it'll make its way open, it gets sticky, um, things get stuck. This, at least, it smoothly can allow something to come in and, and go out. Okay. Back stitch a little. Okay. Got a pocket done. I can't wait to show you. I'm going to loosen up the thing. All right. Snip, snip. All right. So there you go, guys. So this here is the pocket that I'll have this little envelope. I told you she probably wants to do receipts that she could just put her receipts in there. Now, the next page over, I wanted to sew in at the top of this page her her schedule. Like, she likes to schedule everything. So we're going to be there for two weeks, so there's two different week schedules. So I was going to sew along the top here um, that schedule in. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just might have fun. I'm going to shorten the page here a little bit at the bottom, take off that gray because I want her to be able to flip the pages. There we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. I'll take out the pocket. Make this even. It's so different being able to craft with you guys. There we go. 
is the page that opens and closes. That means I can move it over a little bit and then put on the machine and go. So that top page on. And this is like a really cute um, schedule pages from an old pamphlet of papers I had. The rest of the signature, I'm not going to do any sewing or adding any pockets or adding any any belly bands or nothing fancy. The rest of the pages, I'm going to leave that up to her. This is her journal. I just wanted to make sh at least the first couple pages in every signature um, something creative that I put into it. This is, again, this is her journal. I want her happy to make it the way she wants it. Okay. Schedule is in. Nice. Cut that there. Cut that there. Okay. There you go. So when you open up that page, she has her receipt holder. And then she, right here, use my other hand, she has her two-week schedule. And she can probably put whatever she wants on the bottom. That's fine. So that would be that page. But look at that Niagara Falls postcard. And that's so beautiful. I think so. So there's that page. Now, this is the main page when you open up the book. I want this to look pretty. So what I was going to do is I'm going to sew along the edges and then glue her on here. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. And if I want to put some something pretty at the bottom, I can. So I'm going to do that pretty stitch work all along the, uh, the border of this to make it really different. Here we go. And, and we're off. And I want to fast forward when I sew in case you don't want to hear the machine. I don't know if this is going to pick up the really loud machine sound for you guys. We're here. I'll pause it and I'll be right back. Okay. There we go. It's got done sewing that. Well, look at that. Look at that pretty stitch work. So when I glue this in here, it looks like it was sewn in there. What I'm going to do before I do that, as you can see, when I did that pocket, what I should have did was continue the stitch work up and around. I'm going to go ahead and do that now so I don't have to worry about it later. Make sure everything's out of its way. And I'll be right back. Give me press pause. Okay, so there you guys have it. So I finished the stitch work all the way around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Maj Paj and I'm going to glue him right in the middle as the first page. Oops. I think I might be backwards. I am. <laughs> Again, I'm doing this upside down, guys. So this guy is going to go just like that. So when she first opens up her book, it's just going to be really pretty, I think. Keep it simple. Keep it clean cut, and she can design whatever she wants. So I'm going to go ahead and get some Maj Paj, and I'm going to put it on there. I thought about a glue stick, but I don't think it's going to be durable enough. This is a thick postcard. Not pretty. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and just glue her right on. I'm going to get the Mod Podge really quick. Actually, I found something better, I think. And it won't, I don't have to worry about waiting for it to dry. Here's this uh, thick uh, carpet tape. I don't know if any of you guys ever used carpet tape. It's double-sided. It's got, um, those who know what carpet tape is, it's that tape they put underneath carpet to keep it down. Um, and it's so heavy-duty. It's better than duct tape. And it's got that woven threads in it. Um, it's so sticky. But I'm thinking I'm just going to measure what I need for this guy right here. Oops, let me get the phone. Okay, had to grab that phone call really quick. Um, so I, while on the phone, I have my earbuds. <laughs> I cut the tape. Just remember, if you use that carpet tape, use a not so good pair of scissors. I have this one pair of scissors I have that I always take the, the glue from this, this, um, uh, tape and I use rubbing alcohol to remove it but these are always my bad pair of scissors so it's double-sided so you're going to move it around uh, turn your right side down and then put it where you want it like this this stuff like I said it's heavy duty I have this uh, tool here that I use for sewing I just find the, the soft edge here or flat edge and I'm just going to rub it on there really good I don't worry about the edges 
so much. I, this is more like a pretty page than it is actually going to be a working page for something. It's not going to be a pocket. It's not going to, I'm not worried. I think it's going to be just fine. All right. So once I did that and got all the bubbles I can out of it, which I think I could do better. I mean, this stuff sticks. <laughs> this stuff is crazy. All right. And then you just peel like this. That. Oopsie do. And get the other edge. I almost had a rip in this tape and that's why I did that. Usually you just peel once in the middle. Bam. And done. Look how smooth that is. I don't have to worry about bubbled up glue or anything. All right. Let's make sure I'm on the right side. All right. Find the center of my page. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, I think it's pretty. I'm in love. I love the fact that it looks rough. It looks vintage. And uh, I'm in love. I love how that's breaking off on the edge. Sweet. All right. Rub that in a little bit more. There you guys go. Obviously, the signature be right over to the edge like that. That's how I want it to look like when it just opens up. I just didn't, like I said, I didn't want anything more. I wanted her to, to design it the way she wants. So signature one is just about done. This is all I want to do for signature one. And I'll show you what signature one's going to look like. The rest she's going to design herself. I just wanted to start it off Niagara Falls because on the beginning of our trip, that's what we're doing first. Niagara Falls, then Toronto. So signature number two is Toronto. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So I'll show you signature one. All right, I can move this off of there. All right, so here's signature number one in the book. So obviously it's Niagara Falls is the first place we're going to. Oopsie do. Something happened here. Okay. All right. I just had a, my brain just went whoop. All right, so here we go. Here's signature number one. It's just simple pages, nothing fancy. This here also will say uh, Niagara on a dictionary page would be the center, which I think I might do something like that. I'm not sure how to do it. So I see the same pages on the opposite direction and then she'll have her schedule. Cool, huh? Well, I'm glad you guys like it. I'm going to go on to signature number two. I hope you're sticking around. Um, I'm going to do this, do signature number two sewing um, and then signature number three sewing the front page and then we'll be done. Let me go ahead and press pause and get the next one ready. Okay, I had to put that on pause for a bit because I, I was concerned because when I wanted to do the signature, I wanted to open the page and I wanted her calendar right up front. And how I did it was <laughs> it didn't work out. So what I had to do, that very next page, signature, I had sewn this page on top of the next signature page. So then I wouldn't lose it. So this would be part of the signature right here. Does that make any sense? Anyways, I made it work. <laughs> I had no choice to make it work because I didn't want to miss out when she turned it, turned the first page that that calendar was right there. So there you go. Here's the first signature. I'll show you the first signature and then we'll just mess with the next one. There you go. So by doing that, I was able to create a pocket because I needed to sew this page on top of that for that signature. So now she has a pocket, which is fine with me because then she can just stick whatever she wants in there, uh, receipts or storage of any sort. All right, signature one done. My goodness, I didn't mean to make that as rough as it was. <laughs> there you go, signature one. Signature two, I wanted to do, when this, this would look like this on signature number two. I wanted a pocket right here because I don't know if you guys remember the, the first video we had, I told you about how we played this, um, this, this, uh, game question game on a trip and I wanted to be able to have it for a pocket a pocket to put that game into so that's what I'm going to do now so all I'm going to do quickly because this is Laura we're almost in 30 minutes now in a video it's a pretty long video so thank you for being patient so I'm going to take that first page from the signature because the second signature I'm calling it Toronto because we're going to be going to Toronto next and I found a map with Toronto on it and I'm going to put that there so this is pretty much a first day issue envelope that I had to shorten because I didn't want this envelope to be too high to where you can't get that out of the envelope kind of thing. So um, I cut the bottom of it because I really like the the airmail look. So when I sew this on, I'm going to put this on. So 
I'll just show you what I mean. See how it's folded like that? And I'm going to stick it right on there. And I'm going to sew it right on that paper. Right along this edge. Right here to the other edge. I'm going to get the little clips here so it doesn't move. Yeah, go down a little bit more. There we go. And then I'll sew it on, and the only one who will know it is you, and now you guys, <laughs> how I made that trick work. Let me press pause and get these clips on, because I'm only using one hand. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and sew this guy on. It's going to start, I'm actually going to start at the top of the page, because so I could do a pretty, pretty pattern. And I'll do number 17 again. And start at the top. I hope this is helpful for you guys. I hope it's not too confusing. I know what I'm doing in my head. Maybe I hope I'm explaining enough to you guys. Um, yeah, so I just want to make this pocket so it fits that game for us. All right, I did this pretty, pretty stitch. All right, I'll press pause and I'm going to do this stitch work for you guys and I'll be done here in a second. Okay, I'm on home stretch here so you can see this is where the pocket's going to be. I'm going to come up the edge here, and I think I'm going to finish it off onto the top, this pattern, so it looks pretty all the way around, and I'll show you when that's complete. Let me go ahead and get that done. Okay, I am on home stretch, guys. So signature number two cover is almost done, which I'm so, I, I love how it looks. Signature three cover, I don't think I'm going to do any sewing. I think the first two signatures are just plenty. Because the main thing is, the very first signature is obviously Niagara Falls, second one's Toronto, and I, we'll be spending most of our time in Toronto, and I think signature two and three will give her enough room for Toronto, uh, I'm saying it, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, Toronto, Toronto or Toronto, I'm not quite sure, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but um, we're going to be staying there more, so two signatures worth of things to, to add in there would be perfect, so I really don't think I need to do any sewing. Okay, second signature. I'm so excited. Okay, here's second signature. I'm going to put this right over this. Hang on a sec. Put that in the center. All right, second signature. So excited. All right, so here's second signature. And that game I told you about is right here. And it opens up like a page, like a booklet. Um, I haven't stitched it in. I guess I could probably sew with the sew machine down the middle. Um, but I want it to come in and out like this and that, that page signature and by sewing it made it more durable, I think, um, than gluing this pocket. So there is the game inside that signature page. Maybe I should just, um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't know, maybe I should make a cover for this booklet, like a Canadian page. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll make a cover page for this that flips like like this open. Um, let me go ahead and see what I can do. This, this I think I might make a tab. So those two signatures, signature one and two, I'm going to tab them on the edge because one is obviously Niagara Falls. The second two signatures will be Toron Toronto. Uh, let's see if I said it right that time. So these are going to be the tabs for it at the very end. But let me press pause. I'm going to uh, cut a cover for this little booklet. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with more. I took a t the, the map page. Those of you got that, that kit from the last drum journal kit that I did, I had some map paper in there. So I took two pieces of map paper, cut them to the size of this little journal I want to make that's going to go into this pocket. So I have two different sides of that journal cover that's going to flip over. And I'm going to tie it in. So right now I'm sewing along the edge of this map paper to give it that journal sewn look. I could have glued it, yes. But as those of you guys, woo, hit the puddle too far. Um, I just love that stitch look. You know, it just looks, I don't know, more vintage looking, I guess. is the best way I could put it put together. Um... And so this journal that uh, the game we're using in this journal pocket is going to be used a lot. It's going to be pulled out of that pocket often. And so I want to at least to have a cover that is durable enough 
and uh, and it looks really cool. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish this little stitch work here, and then I'll show you what I did. I think it's going to turn out really cute. I guess I went a little bit more above and beyond than I really needed to for this little game that's going to go into this packet, but I don't know. I just want it done right. Let's get this stitch work the back stitch. Alright. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. This was not too confusing. Alright, so these are going to be the journal covers. And I'm going to leave the top here because I need, when you guys know when you make a journal and you're going to tie it in, you need room for that um, area to tie in. So I need to take scissors. Alright, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to go straight up like this without cutting my stitch work on both. Straight up. And I want the one with the ship to be the front of this book. Like this. And then I want this right here to be the back of the book. So I could fold this over like this. And this is what I need. I needed room to tie in that 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 little booklet into the signature. So then I need him. this side. And I'm just kind of winging this like that. And I'm going to sew those two together here in a minute. Not with the pamphlet, obviously. So I'm going to take those two sides like this, facing each other like that. Okay, I think I got this. I hope I got this. I'm just kind of going with the flow here. I'm going to clip this together and I'm going to sew across here, put the two right sides together. I'm going to sew across here, see where that fold is at, I folded. I'm going to sew right just above that fold because I need that little bitty fold to um, tie in that signature. Does that make any sense? Uh, what am I doing? Am I doing this right? Nope, I'm not. These need to come back down. Right. Hang on guys. I'm gonna get it. Oh yes, I'm right. I need a stitch right on top of that. I'm so used to sewing things that I know what I'm I'm doing as far as the seam line and everything. Oh I lost my thread. Um so it's just in my head it's hard to explain it to you what I'm doing. I guess I'll just have to show you <laughs> the best way I can. Um because I'm not really a journaler, I am a sewer. I sew things. So at least maybe for those who are new to sewing or like to learn how to sew, hopefully this might encourage you to try. It's actually not too tough if you don't lose your thread in your thing. Press pause and get this rethreaded. Okay, that took forever. <laughs> it, it makes it worse when you don't have your glasses with you. Makes it much worse. I did not measure this and I did not make this like perfect. So this is just kind of a wing in this one. Yeah, who knows? Maybe it worked, maybe it won't. It might be a total flop. I have no clue. There we go. You can do this. Press pause. So, okay, I just got it out of the machine. So let's see if I did this right. Awesome, that works for me. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so you guys can see what I did here. So this is the front of the pamphlet. So that paper had a light gloss to it. So inside is this here, and I I did that on purpose because I wanted to see if there's a way I can insert this in here somehow either I can sew that signature in here in the middle some way somehow I don't know uh, in my head I have the idea it's just a matter of how can I deliver this idea I think I could do it because I want to not miss the wording on it either Okay, 
So when I sew through, I can glue that down when I'm done. So when it's sewn in the middle, that's the page when you open it up will look like. I can even make that into a side pocket or something, but you can sew that signature into that little bend if you can see it. And the opposite side will look like this finished as well. Looks good to me. Gotta fold that over. All right, all I have to do is sew that in. And then we have our booklet. And so you can see there's the ship. So when we open it up, we have our game. I have to sew it in. I mean, hand stitch it in really quick. Um, I'll do that in the next video. But at least it's started. It's ready to go. And you cute. There's the back. There's the front. Um, so the second signature, this here will just fold right into that pocket. That signature. And you turn the page. Now we'll pull right out. And then we have our game. Okay, I hope you guys, I'm glad you guys lasted this long. I feel like I, I rambled, but I hope it was so much fun, somewhat fun. Um, and you learned something. I know I learned something um, in this, this signature. I made it more work than I expected, but I think it will look really good when it's all done. All right, guys, hope you have a great day. Bye.